time. So you're going to have to embrace that mask, embrace smelling your breakfast for the whole of service. You're going to be hot because we're in Australia, we're in Perth and we have hot summers and the aircons can't keep up with that. So I want us all to just get to our feet this morning and think about, get to our feet this morning. <laughs> And really think about the words of this song because this is saying, I thank God. And there's a bit in it that I love that Taylor Whittle does so well. And it says, so long to my old friends, burdens and bitterness, no, you ain't welcome here anymore. And that's what I want us to declare this morning, that the burdens aren't welcome here, the bitterness isn't welcome here because we get to stand here and declare that God is our King. He is the King of Kings. So as this worship band just shouts this out, and this is for you guys too. This isn't a spectator sport. This is for these guys. This is for you guys. Guys, this is us just declaring that our God is the King of Kings and we get to thank Him this morning. So, so long to bitterness, so long to those burdens. Free yourself of that. Free yourself of feeling hot this morning. Free yourself of those masks, not literally, keep them on. But don't worry that they're there. Don't worry that we're hot. Let's just praise our God. And you guys are going to have to do it even louder because you've got a muffle on your mouth. So let's thank God this morning that we are here and we can worship Him. I'm like, oh, seems a bit, but this is true right now. Hell lost another one, you are free. So why don't we declare that as the band sings this this morning, that hell lost another one, that we are free this morning. We are free to praise God. We are free to sing to God. We know our eternity. Doesn't matter what happens right here. We know our eternity with God. So declare that, that hell lost another one.
almost there. We're almost there. I know it's hot. I know people are calling themselves down, but there's a part in this song. I don't know if you just did it this morning. This get up, get up, get up. Did you do that this morning? I can see them all freaking out this morning because this is it right here, that we're going to get up out of that grave because we've just sung that we are free. We are free this morning in God, which means no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what, there's stuff going on. I know we've got stuff going on. I know there's diagnosis. I know there's doubt. I know there's unbelief. But God's saying right now to get up out of that grave because you know where your eternity is. It's not in the ground, but it's in heaven with God. So no matter what's in that grave, no matter what's keeping you behind this morning, I want us to sing, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave this morning. Whatever's going on, let's just declare that to God. Sorry, guys. But we can sing with you guys. I won't. But these guys, and just declare that, that this morning. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up. Get up, get up. Whatever's get holding you back this morning, grave. get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave this morning. Just declare that right now. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that diagnosis. Get up out of that unbelief. Get up out of whatever's holding you back. If it's your doubts, if it's something that's going chains would be broken God I believe that there's more to come in this service Lord that worship is going to do some stuff in our lives this morning God worship is going to set some people free this morning so I just declare that over your word and over your worship this morning in Jesus name I pray amen all right you guys can take a seat thank you guys put them under pressure a little bit this morning but they'll be back up here soon are we hot now I'm hot now it's hot up here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So as I said, this is our third week, fourth week of Unforced Rhythm of Grace. And we've heard <coughs> from Pastor Clinton the first two weeks and um, Pastor Paul last week. So if you missed those, make sure you catch them. And we've got Pastor Clinton again next week, ending the series, I assume. Um, so if you want to come back next week, if you're visiting with us and you want to come back, make sure you come and hear him preach because he's going to um, preach up a storm, I am sure. Um, so if you don't know me, my name's Sky. hi. I, am the, <laughs> I help with the women's here at C3 Langford Church. I've been here a while now. Um, and it's just every now and then occasionally I get, to, I get the honour of speaking to you guys. So thank you guys. Thank you to these senior pastors who have been through thick and thin in this church and are still here to this day and doing an awesome job. So thank you to you guys. Thank you to the, um, all the leadership team here at C3 Langford Church. So I just really felt as we were um, through worship and through all of this, we sing these songs, and I, that's what I was speaking about before we sung that song. We sing these songs about, um, you know, what God does for us. He gets rid of burdens. He gets rid of bitterness. And we sing like, you know, get up out of that grave and hell lost another one. I am free. And I just wonder how much we really take that in because we're here every week. And we, and I don't know if like a lot of you probably have worship on all the time. We do just have it in the background. And so it just becomes a bit normal, doesn't it, to hear these words and um, to hear this music and just to sing along with it. And we believe it. But I wonder how much we really think about it, how much we really think about what Jesus did for us. 
the sacrifice that he made, the only one that could have made that sacrifice so that we could have eternity with him. And these are the words that we're speaking. When we're saying get up out of that grave, it's because we, we belong with Jesus. We belong in heaven with God. And do how much do we really think about that and put value in that? And we've been asking some tough questions the last few weeks. If you were here or if you missed it, we had Pastor Clinton asking us, you know, what stops you? from praying and Paul was up here speaking about the word and what stops you from reading your bible and I guess I'm going to continue with the tough questions and say how much do you put in worship like do you actually see the value of worship how much do you value worship which is you know we all have to question like question ourselves I was doing it during the week like you know you might be good at good prayer, good worship, but how much do I open my Bible and why don't I? And I, I have these questions and it's something we constantly have to evaluate and ask ourselves. For me, it feels a little bit like homework to read the Bible sometimes because I do study outside of church. Um, but I, you know, I do a lot of worship and I do a lot of praying, but, you know, we want the trifecta. We want all of them. And so that's my question this morning is how much value do you put in it? It's heavy heavy this morning but on a more light-hearted note I'm gonna let you in on something that I've been watching I could just tell you guys that I've been watching this documentary and sound really sophisticated um, but I'm not gonna lie it is a documentary but it's on cheerleading not so sophisticated and what's worse is poor Pete's had to watch it as well because he just watches whatever I'm watching at the time so this is where I'm putting my time a lot of value in that. Um, no, but what I found interesting about this documentary was just how insane these people were. Have I reckon some of you? Has anyone seen Cheer? The doc- yeah, there's someone. Is that, t- is that Shane? <laughs> Did not expect that. <laughs> Have you seen number two? Is that a spoiler alert? But yeah, there's a second documentary and I'm going to spoil it. So if you did want to watch it again. Anyway, so for those of you who haven't watched it, it's like competitive cheerleading. Obviously, it's not Australian. It's American because it's very big over there. And look, I like sport. So any kind of competition, I'm like, like I can get into it. So that's my excuse for watching this document. It's not the drama that goes along with it. Um, It's the competitiveness. Um, But we're watching this, and every episode, so this is the second season we're watching, yep, we made it to the second season, and every episode, me and Peter just like, these people are insane, these people are insane, like, from their emotional roller coasters to how involved they are in each other's lives, and these people, like, in junior college, they're teenagers, and it's just insane, but then what's more insane is that they, they're quite famous now. These people that um, were in this first documentary are quite famous in America. Probably not so much here because we don't really care for cheerleading here. But they're known in America. And so in the second season, it was like going into that because they became famous from the first one. And what I watched was... Um, so there was... They, I don't, this must be on a Snapchat thing. These young people are probably going to correct me here. But you can pay celebrities, probably not all celebrities, probably not like the real big celebrities, to send like a message to someone, like a video message. This is a thing. Anyway, it's a thing because I saw it happening. Um, so what I was watching is these teenage guys and girls, cheerleaders, being paid to do voice messages to other people and in one occasion it was a husband paid to get a happy anniversary for his wife and I was like that's weird right is that not weird like imagine Pete paying a cheerleader a b-grade celebrity cheerleader to send me a message saying happy anniversary How weird would that be, right? (laughs) But these people put so much value in any kind of celebrity. And a spoiler alert, they didn't win in the second season. (laughs) And the devastation that these... Because there's so much 
emotion and adrenaline that goes on in these competitions because it's big for them. This is like their life. And they didn't win and they're supposed to have won and they just lost it. Like I'm talking on the ground, crying, loud, completely undignified, but they put so much value in winning that competition, in doing cheerleading. And at the end of the documentary, one of the girls, she's going to spend a whole other year at this college that she doesn't need to be at to do it again, to try again. A lot of them do that as well. Spend another year to try and do that again. And she says at the end, I feel sorry for people who don't have something in their life that they're as passionate about as I am about cheerleading. And I was like, I feel sorry for you that you put so much value that it determines your happiness, it determines all of your life, that you're willing to take a whole nother year out of your life to try again at this. That And cheerleading doesn't get them anywhere. Like maybe they'll cheer for like a, a team for a few years and then that's it. That's all they're going to get for it. And it's so much highs and lows and so much disappointment. And I think Millie spoke about this the other week about Bitcoin or something. So unpredictable and it comes with so much burdens and so much bitterness when they don't get what they want. So much conflict amongst the team because some people don't get to do it. But it's it's so much a part of life. Sporting and like fans of people. You watch like One Direction back in the day and the fans that they were just crying and I remember we were watching something with Tim and Michaela and Tim's like, I, wish, I hope I never am like that about someone else because they just go crazy but they put so much value in that. And so it made me think, do we put the same kind of value, the same kind of undignified, abandoned passion into God? Because worship onto God isn't going to come with burdens. Worship unto God is going to fulfill us. But do we put as much value into it? Do we come here and just let it all go for God? Because I don't think we always do. And so my question is, why not? Someone in the Bible who did do that was David. So we're going to be looking at David's life because we've been speaking this during this whole time about are you freeing God or are you feeling burdened? Are you feeling burnt out by religion? Because that's what the verse says. Are you burdened? Are you burnt out? Are you weary? But God says, come to me and you'll find your rest. So that's what we're going to be speaking about this morning. Are we weary this morning or are we willing to be undignified and abandoned for God? So we're looking at David's life. A lot of people know David, I like David. He's got a lot to him, David. But a lot of people just know David for his David and Goliath story. But there's a lot more to David, a lot more that comes after that story. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware of David, he was the youngest of eight. Sorry, to drink. He, he tended sheep, which was usually done by the lowly or the servants. And I guess being number eight of eight put him in that category but out of all his brothers he was anointed by Samuel to be the king of Israel and then he defeats Goliath which is the story we all know and love because we love an underdog we love an underdog that wins um, he marries a girl named Michal I think it's spelt like Michael but with other e's so I'm guessing it's Michal um, which is important later on in the story and when he was king, he wanted to restore the nation to worshipping God because he saw a lot of value in worshipping God. And so to do that, he, he led an army. He didn't just send off a few people, but this was important to him. So he led an army to bring the Ark of God into Jerusalem. And so that's where we're picking up in the story right here. This is in 2 Samuel 6 to 12. I didn't actually give my scriptures to anyone this morning, but that's okay because I'm going to read it for you. 2 Samuel 6 to 12, and it says, Now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the Ark of God. So David went to bring up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, 
David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. And so the part I want to get to focus on here was that as he was doing this, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Because this is how David felt about this. He was so keen on restoring the nation to worshipping God that as he was doing it, he was just rejoicing to God. He was dancing with all our might. And I know that in some times in our lives, we feel that way. We feel so just on fire for God. We feel so like we just want to shout out. We want to rejoice. You know, it can be here on a Sunday morning as we're worshipping God, or it could be on our walks. I know I do a lot of walks when I'm worshipping God. And you just get all these crazy big ideas of what God can do in our lives and we get these crazy ideas of what God can do in our church and we just feel like rejoicing and shouting out to God and this is how David was feeling in that moment like he had the presence of God on him he was dancing before the Lord and he was just so excited about what was going on and then it says in 16 as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David Michal daughter of Saul watched from a window now She's the daughter of Saul. So she's born, like she was brought up in reality, in royalty. So this, you can imagine the kind of woman that she was, very dignified woman, very distinguished, knew the good life. And it says that she was watching from the window and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. When when David returned home to bless his household, Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today. You can just imagine the venom as she says this. Going around half naked in full view of slave girls of his servants as a vulgar fellow would. So King David has had this moment with God. He's been dancing before the Lord. He's been celebrating. He's been worshipping. And then he comes in to bless his household. And this is what he gets. His wife just telling him how vulgar he is, how un undignified he is and this happens in our life we go through these moments of just praising God worshiping God and then whatever it is we get brought back down to reality we get brought back down to life and what's going on in life and it may not be you know a wife telling you you're vulgar and undignified but it might just be you know for me Harry asking for his 10th snack of the day takes the edge off a little bit do you know what I mean or it can be you know something's happened when you don't feel like you can trust God anymore because it didn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen or maybe you go to the doctor and you hear news you didn't want to hear whatever that is maybe you go to work and your boss puts you in your place maybe not justifiably but we go through these moments in our life where we have these amazing worship moments of God and then reality hits. And David could have turned around and gone, oh, you know, whatever, like that wasn't worth it all. You know, whatever it is, like we sometimes do. But he says back to, he says, David says to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. And this is what he says to his wife. This was before the Lord. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what the unbelief says. It doesn't matter what the diagnosis says. It doesn't matter what the doubt says. This is before the Lord and I will continue to worship my God. I'll become even more undignified in the eyes of God because he knew that it didn't matter what other people thought. And I, I spoke, when the last time I spoke, I spoke about people willing to humiliate themselves before God because when he stepped out and he's seen the fruit of that when he stepped out before Goliath he could have been humiliated he could have been dead for all we know he didn't know but he trusted God and he's willing to be humiliated in the eyes of other people in worship to God and that's the undignified worship to God and so what does that look like today because I'm not asking any of you to dance until your clothes spring off you because you will be escorted out if that happens. 
that it's just living in that abandon, that sincerity in your worship. And it's not just on a Sunday morning, but it's worshipping God through every situation, in every aspect of our life. It doesn't mean singing all the time, but it means doing everything with God on your mind, doing everything in worship to God, in servitude to God, because David saw the value in that. And that's the, the verse that we've been speaking about. It says, Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. And this is the bit that I want to concentrate on. It says, walk with me and work with me. It doesn't say you're a Christian, so it's going to be easy. It says, work with me and walk with me. That's how you get that unforced rhythm of grace. You need to be in your word. You need to be in your prayer. You need to be in worship. And it needs to be all three of those. You can't just sit back and think that life is going to be easy because it's not. Life is not easy. But that's what we've been talking about, being yoked with Christ. I know for me that when I have been in my word, when I've been in worship, you feel more confident, you feel like you trust God more, you feel like you can take on things and when things come against you, you feel like you can deal with that. But when you've had like times and we all have them where you haven't been with God as much, you, have, you start to analyse things, you start to feel bitter, you start to compare, you do all of those things because you're not yoked with God. And that's what we've been speaking about, that unforced rhythm of grace. And I asked a few people, you know, do you get that unforced rhythm of grace? Because it's a bit of an ambiguous um, thing, isn't it? Unforced rhythm of grace. And we've spoken a lot about nature because God is in everything. And we've had um, Pastor Clinton speaking. I don't know if he spoke to you guys. He spoke to us about crushing the waves. Did he speak about that? Just like the crushing of the waves on the beach is um, like an unforced rhythm of grace. And we had Paul speaking about, you know, the trees and the way that they're all so different but so perfect in their differentness. And as I was um, on a walk and I was thinking about this and I was thinking, you know, what is that unforced rhythm of grace? And I had my music in my ears and I must have been louder than I thought because I disturbed a whole bunch of birds that were just in someone's front yard. But it was a whole bunch of white parrots and they all of a sudden flew off in front of me. But they didn't just fly off in different directions. They were like in all different directions but all the same in this unforced rhythm of grace. And that's how God works. We don't know always in what direction that we're going to but you can see it so much in nature, just that unforced rhythm of grace. And that's what being yoked with Christ is like. We don't always know in what direction that we're going. We don't always know the outcome but it's just that he says, come to me, come to me, work with me. And the rest of the verse says... Um, learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. When we put our value in things like cheerleading or famous people or sports stars, there's so much emptiness that comes with that, so much burden that comes with that because we'll never get what we want out of them. But when you come to God with your worship, when you put your whole being, your whole value in him, it says that you'll find that he's gentle and humble and easy to please. You will find refreshment. The passion translation of this is, are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Come to me, I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Doesn't that sound amazing this morning? As the worship band comes out, we're not done yet, but let's just get the worship team up. He says, I am your oasis. You will find refreshment and rest in me. David didn't always have it easy in his life. David did some stuff as well. Read about Bathsheba if you want to know some of David's indiscretions. He wasn't perfect but he always came to God in worship. He came to him with his sin, saying, I know I've sinned against you. He came to him with a broken spirit and says, I have a broken spirit, but I know that you're going to take that. And he's written a lot of Psalms in the midst of these wilderness. So just know that while you're going through things, 
that David was going through things as well and he still came to God. And this here is David in the wilderness worshipping God in Psalm 63, 1 to 5. It says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. That's, that's a massive statement. Your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. This was amongst a whole lot of stuff that David was going through with his son and he was out in the wilderness. And through all of that, he was saying, I thirst for you. In a dry and barren land, I thirst for you, not for water, but I thirst for you because your love is better than life. Are we putting the same value in worship unto God? Are we putting the same value in our relationship with God? I've got the band to sing and we sung it already this morning. I raise a hallelujah because I just really feel like God's going to do something in worship this morning. And this song, like every song probably, there's a history behind this song. So the, this is by Bethel. The CEO of Bethel, his son was sick. His son was unwell. And um, the whole church were praying and then the whole world was praying for this boy. And the CEO messages his, part, his um, worship leader that night and says, I don't think my son's going to make it through the night. Imagine sending that message. I mean, Pastor Clinton and Leah can imagine sending that message. I've been through that. He said, I don't think he's going to make it through the night. And so the worship leader was like, we're not going to see the miracle. We're not going to see the thing that we've been praying for. And then he says, as he was saying this, as he was in this doubt and this unbelief, the lyrics to this song just started coming out of him. And the lyrics are, raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy, louder than the disbelief. Our, our weapon is a melody. Our weapon is a melody. We don't need swords and guns and things like that. We need worship onto God. That's our weapon this morning. And praise God, this boy made it through. And, and you see on the video and he's there and he's worshiping God to this song, which is just an amazing moment. And the father says after, he says, God's timing often doesn't make sense until you look back to see that mountains were climbed and canyons were crossed on no strength of your own. In the battle for Jackson's life, the global church community rose up like a mighty army and joined us in prayer and worship all over the world. Our son was miraculously healed and today is perfectly healthy. Which is just an amazing story because they got to see the miracle. They got to see the outcome that they desired. For me and Pete, we have you, worship for us has been an amazing weapon. And we don't always see the outcome. We all know my story where we lost our little girl. But what a lot of you don't, I haven't spoken about because it was a really personal thing for me and Pete was when we got the ashes for Grace, we didn't want a big thing. We didn't want anyone around. This was, our hearts were breaking, but we still loved God and we still put a lot of worship into God. So we took those ashes to the beach because to be around nature is to be with God. And we let those ashes go and Pete had his guitar and we just sat there and we just worshipped God together. And that is what got us through that. And it wasn't something that we had prayed for, but looking back now, you can see the mountains that were moved. You can see the canyons that were closed together. And you can see that God worked in that situation. It wasn't a good situation. Our hearts were breaking. But we both now look back and say we wouldn't change it. We wouldn't change anything of that because God grew us 
in relationship with him. He grew us in relationship with each other and we had our two beautiful children after that as well, which you could never take back. And so my prayer this morning is, yes, we see the good outcome of that little boy that was saved, but it doesn't always look like that. But that doesn't mean we can't worship God. That doesn't mean that there's still not a miracle taking place because I still see my life as a miracle. I still see my life as the best thing ever because I am in relationship with God. I am in worship to God. And I see other people that have been through the same thing where it's destroyed their life. It has ruined their life. And you can't blame them for that. But I just thank God that it hasn't destroyed our life. It hasn't ruined our life because that is the power of God. That is the power of worship. So my prayer as we sing this, raise a hallelujah this morning. If there is things going on in your life where you're like, God, I need to deal with this. God, I need your weapon this morning. I need that melody this morning. I need you to take care of some things in my heart and in my spirit this morning. We're going to stand to our feet this morning and we're going to worship God with everything that we have because we get to be here today. We get to stand here and declare that He is our King. He is our Lord this morning. So why don't we sing that out? Let's just lift up this praise to God this morning. Let's just lift up this worship this morning. And my prayer this morning is that there's some stuff, I know that there's some stuff going on that we need to tackle this morning. There's some unbelief in our hearts this morning that God wants to deal with because He wants you to come to Him. He wants you to have that life that isn't burdened. He wants you to have that life where you can have rest in Him where you can have peace in Him. So why don't we just sing this out this morning. The presence of my enemy Then I'll raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Then I'll raise a hallelujah Everyone. 
with eyes closed, I'm just going to pray right now. If you want to join your life with God, whether it's for the first time or if you want to rededicate your life, we're just going to pray that this morning. So why don't we all just pray together. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Make me brand new. I believe as Jesus died for me and rose again so that I could live for you. Fill me with your spirit so I could know you, so I could serve you and follow you for the rest of my life. My life is not my own. Today I give it to you. Thank you for new life in Jesus' name. And then I wanna speak to that second group. Maybe you've been walking with Jesus for a while, but something in this message has just clicked inside of you. And there's some stuff you wanna battle this morning with God, that you wanna battle in worship to God this morning. And if that is you, I invite you. I know that it's hot. I know that we're tired, but God wants to deal with some stuff this morning. He wants to get us geared up in worship this morning. So if that is you this morning, I wanna invite you forward. We can pray for you or you can just come forward and you can worship God this morning because I really believe that God's going to use this time, use this worship as a weapon this morning, that we're going to fight some battles this morning. So why don't we just sing that out this morning because this is a new life as well. You can start afresh right here. doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for the last 20 years, you can start new right here in this moment and just declare that your life is going to be dedicated to worshipping God, to being yoked with Christ because when you're yoked with Christ, the burden is light. He doesn't expect a lot from you. He just expects you to be in relationship with Him. So let's just sing that out this morning and I invite you to come forward and just praise God this morning in this place. in our worship to you, God, in our homes, in our workplaces, wherever we are, just to put that value in you, God, that value where it's not going to be let down. I praise you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to leave this open to come and worship, but otherwise, thank you guys so much. Praise God this morning.
know the Spirit of God is just ministering to people right now. There are people, you have been stuck for so long. And when Sky spoke about the voice that of, his, of his wife that just pulled him down, there are people here, you have just been so hit by that. Those voices, when you were just, what you felt in your heart was doing what God asked you to do or the right thing to do. And that voice has taken it, twisted it, and slammed you down. God, by His Spirit today, has addressed that right now, and He's going to just bring healing. And you don't have to go like a prayer, a, a prayer of, oh, God, I please need you. No, 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 just surrender it. So as the worship team just sings in the next few minutes, we won't keep you long. The Spirit of God can work right now where you are, when you're in your car, when you're driving home, wherever you are. But there's been a blockage because of things that were said, done to you, when you were thinking and feeling that you were just doing what God wanted you to do. And He's bringing healing to it right now. He just says, would you surrender that? Surrender to trust Him. Just you're going to trust Him with it. Come on, He's unstacking you. Oh, great English. And that's what He's doing. Yeah. Just play that instrumental just like you're playing right there. Just take it up a little bit. Come on, right now over you, the Spirit of God is just coming. It's like resentment. There's resentment there. There's hurt. And then it turned into anger and then it sort of went into bitterness. Ended up at resentment now. Oh, you can put on the mask and you can still wear it and look like you're all good. The Spirit of God's not interested in the outward appearance. He's interested in the heart. It's, it's about freedom. It's not about rehearsing the hurt. It's about Him bringing His freedom to you. Just wherever you are right now, Neil gave us an instruction that maybe part of the way we receive is just an open hand. Surrendered up to the sky and just go, here I am. It's about freedom. It's not just, it wasn't fair, it wasn't right. We acknowledge that. Can you surrender that to Him? Can you give that over to Him right now? Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Yes. Singers, I think there's a song of deliverance, not necessarily the words, that, that melody. But there's a song of deliverance that the Spirit of God just wants to release right now. Just begin to sing into your mic. There's a song right there. Don't wait for the next one. Just begin to worship into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just begin to worship, begin to worship God. Come on, God's just shifting some stuff. Come on, you're handing it over. Freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom, freedom. Wholeness, healing. Freedom. Come on, you and him, you and him. Just surrender it. Just surrender it right here. Just surrender. Don't hold on. Oh, but Pastor Clint, I've already prayed this, so no, just surrender. Great if you prayed it, awesome. Open up. Here he comes. Holy oh, Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Come on, invite him into that area of your heart. Holy Spirit. Above the circumstance, living, lifting him above the situation. I command freedom right now.
above it. Jesus above it. Jesus above it. My relationship with him above it. shift of perspective. Been looking inward at the hurt and the stuff. God's shifting your eyes. Lift your eyes. Come on, lift your eyes. Surrender the hurt. See his plan. See his purpose. I look to the hills because that's where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. But lift your eyes, lift your head, lift your spirit, lift it up. Stop with your head down. God is bringing you out of that. He's bringing you into a place of worship that you're going to yoke with Him in worship. The key is worship. The key is worship. Come on, worship Him. Beyond someone praying, beyond a verse even, the key is worship. Worship the verse. the Spirit of God literally healing. There's like surgery happening right here, right now. It is so deep. It is so deep and entrenched. Come on. He's coming in and he's just cutting, scalping away. Spirit of God. It's still here, guys. It's still on us. getting out from the ashes. I want you to see your internal perspective just shifting and changing. Don't be distracted in this moment, you and him. My life, God, every part, every relationship, every space, every area, every My thoughts, my word life, my prayer life. Be lifted high, be lifted above offense, be lifted above hurt, be lifted above circumstance. Diagnosis, be lifted above that, God. Be lifted above that. Thank you, God, that you're with me. Thank you, God, that you're going to be with us in the midst of it. Thank you that, God, whatever the circumstance has been, and no matter what has been said, but, Lord, I thank you that you're the one that's there with us. You said you'll never leave, you'll never forsake us. That, Lord God, that you are our peace. And that your salvation is that no longer we who live, but is that Christ that lives in us. And so God, thank you for your strength that comes. Arise, 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 arise. Come on. He's so gentle because the sky read out that. When you come to him, you see he's so humble and he's so gentle. He's not coming in with a jackhammer. He doesn't need to. He just comes in with his love. Receive right now, just freedom. You don't need to try to get freedom, just receive it. Surrender the hurt. Surrender the blockage. Surrender the unbelief. Surrender the discouragement, the resentment whatever it is that you need to surrender. When you surrender it, that means you give it to Him. Cast your care upon me because I care for you. That's what God says. But He doesn't leave you just void in that space now. Now He comes and He fills that. fill you right now. Here comes he's just is the love of God just gonna fill. Spirit of God. 
Don't switch it when we say the love of God. Oh, yeah. That, no, no, no. It is so amazingly powerful for you right now. Let the love of God come. <clears throat> I see stuff that has happened 20 years ago for someone's heart today. And you've been carrying and walking with, down deep in the inside, just the guilt and the shame. It's, I'm not saying it's specifically 20 years. It's just beyond like 20 years plus that way. He's just, he's, he's asking, would you give that to me? Would you give me the guilt of that? The shame of that? The hurt of that? The disappointment of that? The embarrassment of that? It could have been two minutes ago, whoever you are, I'm just saying. I just feel like God's just reaching back into our history because he's actually wanting to reset. He says, would you give it to me? He says, I will heal it. For some of you, your innocence was taken and stolen. He says, I'm going to restore back to you. I'm going to restore back to you. I'm restoring that. He says, behold, I make all things new all things new. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Father, we thank you right now. whatever our thing has been that, that's happening against us we bring that into surrender that to you because you are for us and so we want you to fill that vacuum that void that area not just cover over it but thank you Holy Spirit you're removing it and in its place you're planting again the light and the life and the seed of Jesus Christ so, Father, thank you for your healing. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for wholeness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.